The completion of her RV bathroom door makeover hit a major snag. How much of it did Jamie have to redo? We'll show you on this episode of Roaming with Rosie. I was trying to find you, and you're just sitting there, not even in the sun. Huh. You're very cute, even with sawdust on your face. we also struggled to find a middle ground when one person wants to paint the trim espresso and the other one wants to paint it white. We'll show you how we solve that dilemma. Make sure and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. That way you'll be notified each time we put out a new video. Hey Romers, Jamie back at ya. What we got going today is we're going to be doing some molding. So I got to get the molding done around the edge where the flooring meets the walls. So we're going to be doing that today. Uh, let me show you here where we got the shiplap I'm going to be doing some base molding and then the rest of the perimeter like here and the rest is going to be quarter round so that's what I'm going to be doing today um, so follow along with me I'm going to show you how that process kind of happens of the molding on the passenger side I've got pretty much done. Just gonna show you here. It's everything that I have done. Um, obviously I can come back fill the holes and uh, um, sand and paint but that's what I got so far. Um, now I have to um, move on to the driver's side over here. Gotta get this done. Um, all the way under here and over here and then uh, take it all the way back over there what I'm doing here is I'm uh, making the door uh, look better than it did before it was just a flat slab door so what I'm doing is I'm gonna make it kind of look like a barn door so what I've done is I've taken this I believe it's about quarter inch thick, this material. Uh, it's called lattice. I got it at Lowe's. Cutting it, I cut it like a picture frame, kind of 45 it up here, and then doing a picture frame, and then uh, I did this to kind of separate it, and then I'm gonna have a piece running this way, and a piece on the bottom doing the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you see how I do that, and then I'll show you once it's all completed. So I just arrived on the scene. And surprise, surprise, Jamie's also doing this bathroom door. What, are you going to make it look like a barn door? Yeah. Cool. You know I like that. Yeah. 
It's hard when he's creating. He forgets to show you guys what he's doing. Oh, this is the molding? Yeah. Oh, wow. I already shot all that. That looks so good. So what he's working on is a solution to some of these spots here, this one right here. So there's that space between these two cabinets. It would be hard for me to get in this space. I could kind of try with a roller, you know, up in there, but it would be hard to avoid this carpeting that's the ceiling in here. So Jamie's idea is to just create something that fits in inside the whole thing and closes it off. So he's kind of making it up, creating it as it goes. Is every one of them the same? Okay. Is every one of the openings the same? I don't know. I don't know if so. This is for the one in the bedroom though. Sorry, I'm yawning. Oh, that's... <laughs> no, it's the one for the... For the above, kitchen? Above the... Uh... Recliners? Recliners. So this is what he's creating. like that that allowed them to create some sort of cabinets in a standard size and just yeah, use them in every coach them in they yeah so that's what I think I think they just made their cabinets in a standard size and didn't matter how long the coaches were because they just left these spaces but if you go to repaint it it's a parking pain in the butt to solve Even. No. It's wider at the top? Yeah, it's a little wider. Oh, yeah, a little wider at the top. So we're constantly saying the Holiday Ramblers are really great made coach, but it's things like this that I think in any recreational vehicle that you find and you're like, really, really, it just didn't matter if the cabinets were the same width at the bottom as the top, if the spaces weren't the same, like they just slap them up there frustrating. What's that called? Um, well this part's a rubber mallet, this part's hard plastic. I don't want to hit it with a regular hammer because it'll make a dent. Yeah, it'll make dents in the bottom.
And you're just sitting there, not even in the sun. Huh. You're very cute, even with sawdust on your face. You even have sawdust on your face. Look at him. He's just sitting here. <laughs> He's a good boy. He got sawdust. <laughs> Thought he was going to come in for the night and paint tomorrow. Let's see what he's doing. It's cold and dark. Are you still, are you still working on that piece? It's too dark in here now. I'm filling all the cracks. Yep. Is there going to be a perfect solution to this problem? To this cheap way that, or this uh, half-ass way that they did it. Oh, you even got that one way up there. Nice. Uh, basically, as you can see here, I got the bathroom door, the barn door that I uh, did that wood trim to. And then I actually applied primer and paint, and um, I did the f primer, that went down fine. Did the first coat of paint, and uh, that went down okay. And then did the second coat of paint, and it was bubbling and doing all kinds of weird junk. I don't know if you can really see it. I'll go down here and see if you can pick up on that. Yeah, see that? Basically what's happened, um, I went to back to Home Depot, kind of told them what was going on. Um, they basically said, they think it has to do with uh, the temperature because it's been so cold um, here. Now cold in standards of Arizona cold, it's uh, been in the like mid 40s and then during the day it's been the hottest, the warmest it's got is like 60 degrees. So um, when I was applying this was probably 50 to the mid 50s and they're thinking that that's kind of what the issue is is that the paint's not adhering because of the temperature so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sanding this down to get rid of those nasty bubbles and, and all that kind of junk and then I'm going to reprime it and I'm going to paint it again but I'm going to do it I brought it home so I can do it inside the house where I can control the temperature because the house is staying around 70 to 72 degrees so that's a better better scenario for getting a, a better finish supposedly so we're going to test that theory as far as what Home Depot said see if we have a better outcome and then I'll let you know uh, what we have from that point I just wanted to follow up on the status of the door so what I've done is I've sanded it I've applied four coats of paint and it laid down really nicely so apparently Home Depot was correct and the, the temperature was just too low when I tried applying the paint before um, so like I said, I got four coats of paint on this side, so this side is completed. I have to flip it over and do the back side. Uh, if you notice, it's white. Uh, when I initially painted it, Linda and I basically had a miscommunique. I thought she wanted the door and the molding to match the valances, when in fact, after having a discussion, we decided to go with white. So I just need to do that back side of the door and then finish the molding, and I'll keep you updated on the status of the motorhome. Thanks for watching, and make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell so you won't miss the next episode of this old RV's renovation. Happy Holidays! Hey Roamers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'll be notified each time we put out a new video.